Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I gonna try to bring to you a new video tutorial in order to perform a new FEM simulation. If you are following my channel in the last video we made a, we went through a FEM tutorial in order to simulate a hyperelastic pneumatic network using the software Abacus. This video is going to be similar in terms of results that we are expecting but we're going to use another software which is ANSYS. ANSYS is um, a very famous software as well for engineer simulations, detail twins, and yeah, for engineering simulation it's, quite, it's probably one of the biggest uh, software packages that we have available for in the industry as well. And when I was doing my research as well in this topic, I never really found not tutorials, tutorials i didn't found any tutorials actually but uh, like even kind of help that could help me to go through the kind of simulation that i wanted to make in this case the ha this hyper elastic uh, large deformation simulations so today i'm gonna try to cover this topic again as well in abacus in ansys if everything goes as we expect we should have approximately approximately the same results as we got in the last video so how we are going to start this video tutorial we're going to start with ANSYS workbench workbench is the main i will say main the main tool of ANSYS in which you create you or to program you you simulation in which you set up your simulations and here as you can see you we have all kind of components and toolbox that we could uh, use in order to, to make our setup. For this case and as well as the last video we are going to cover only an static structural analysis. We are not going to go in explicit dynamics uh, or other kind of transient uh, structural mechanics. We are going just to make it simple as a static structure. In order to start this tutorial we are going to take here from uh, yeah we are going to open our uh, workbench as uh, here and then we're going to find the static structural toolbox, the, the system, and then we're going just to drag and drop to create a standalone system. Um, what ANSYS differs from Abacus in this case, if you will remember before, Abacus used to have one step-by-step -step follow through setup. Here is kind of the same, but divided in different software or packages or, software or or different toolboxes and then you need to complete your setup in any of these small packages to in order to set it up uh, completely so we are going to start so we see here we have a, a static structural analysis and then we are going to start we have five main uh, main components i will say five main components it's, those are the engineering that database is which uh, in which the materials that uh, we are going to use are going to be uh, defined in this engineering database and then we are going to we can take use we can we can use them as we want to assign materials to the different parts during the simulation then we have the geometry setup uh, here we can use it to import geometry to the final geometry then we have the model setup in order to assign material to mesh the part and then we have the setup solution and results model setup and these four steps here they share the same software environment i can say but uh, actually they are as well separated so they, they share the main environment we're going to see it later and here you define the whole uh, simulation setup so we are going to start defining in, in abacus we started defining importing the part that we wanted to use in ANSYS I can really recommend to start with engineering data with the material properties that we want to use so we double click in engineering data and then we always have as a baseline or as default a structural still I'm just going to delete it right clicked and then delete and then we uh, if we have a blank space it says click here to add a new material we're not going to do that we're going to right click and then we are going to the engineering data sources. We are going to take a sample of an elast uh, of an hyperelastic material material as we made with Abacus, and then we are going to completely 
we're, co we're gonna we're going to fully define this hyper elastic sample material with the same data that we use in abacus so we're going to go to hyper elastic materials and then we can see that the ANSYS provides few samples already uh, of materials so we're going to take as well the uh, elastomer sample we based on the geomo hyper elastic model as same as we did with abacus so you not you don't need to double click you need to click here in a add to h a2 so we click this and then we go back to engineering data sources and then it's already here in our materials that we can use that we have available for our setup so if you see here you have already some uh, test data that ANSYS provides generously but this is not complete if you go to the C C uh, tutorial setup and then you click run it's going to throw you an error because the material is not fully defined so we need to fully define how do we do it we need as well density so we double click in density and then we are going to use the same as we used in abacus 1049 ki uh, kilograms per cubic meter and then we put it again because it changed the units it's the units and now we have it so and then we need to assign for abacus we use a geo model with coefficients we are going to do the same here we go to we usually have this here we go to hyper elastic and then we have here the different uh, elastic models that we could use we go to geo second order we define two parameters the last time so we take it here and then we define as well we have megapascals and it was 0 0.11 megapascals 0 0.02 megapascals 0 for d1 and 0 for d2 and then as you see here this is the model of the geo that we took from uh, my research and this is the provided data that ANSYS provides actually if you want to uh, fit this you can use uh, curve fitting but as I said we are going to use this geo sequence order in order to calculate this is the model that we are going to use so if you make this correctly you should have no problem in order to simulate in ANSYS, ANSYS is quite, not ANSYS, every software, if you don't define properly the materials, if you don't define properly the material properties, it's going to throw you an error uh, almost immediately or it's going to do something quite not okay with, this, with, this, with, the, with the simulation. So it's you, in ANSYS, you really need to take care of this. It's quite complex to be honest in ANSYS. The material definition if you have your own material this is probably going to be the most complicated part for you in order to get accurate results but for this tutorial i'm going to provide you the the material properties that we have combined with my research and combined with the data that ANSYS provides in order to get an accurate model so then we close this engineering data and as we see here engineering data is already checked as a correct and then that is at, at least for all material creation and definition then we go to the geometry uh, setup and then we in order to import our part we need to right click here and then import geometry browse and then we take a look for the where do we have the step file this step file is going to be linked in the script in the description below so you can just download it and follow this tutorial if you so desire it so we click in open and then in ANSYS we need to refresh or update the cells of the setup in order to to refresh the, the 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 setup that we are defining so it's it's take uh, it's gonna take a few seconds it it's always take a few seconds doesn't matter if you have the best machine in the world it it takes a few seconds always so we can see here that ANSYS is busy and now you don't don't get shocked or yeah or just scary because you have an, a question here symbol is pretty normal it's just that the model is still not defined so we go to model and double click then mechanical is going to start this is the another package instance of the ANSYS software it's going to take as well a few seconds depends on your machine as well and this is what we have again if you remember as well from the abacus setup it's exactly the same geometry 
Yeah. We are going to close to close this for now. I'm going to get one step back in order to make this tutorial right. And I can always recommend you. We have a newer version of ANSYS, I think about 2017, 2016 probably. We have Design Modeler and Space Climb in order to edit or 3D model. I always personally use Design Modeler still. Uh, it's not because it's old school, it's because I think it's more structurized. And as we said as well, and as I said as well in the last video, usually you only try to import parts to ANSYS. You at least I don't generate and I never knew someone in my professional career that really used the 3D model engine of ANSYS to generate 3D parts. So if you see here in this mo in this design modeler, we have in input a small lightning symbol, which is which is means that and we cannot see anything here, which means that the part, even though it's imported, is still not generated to the model. So we click uh, right click and then generate and then now we see the model here and we can see perfectly the internal cavities of uh, of our tutorial sample. Yeah, that's how it looks. Looks pretty good to me. No import errors. And then another thing that I can recommend you. Okay, people. First, we need to save the we need to save the the project. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I always forgot to save the project. You can save the project, just file and then save project or you go to the workbench and you go to file, save as and then you save the project. I already have it saved and it generates the main ANSYS file and then a project with exactly the same name, but it's a folder. So we go again to design modeler and then I can recommend you to generate at least one surface at this early stage of the simulation in order to not get confused later or to already know in what you want to do. So in order to generate, as we said the last time, the important surface that we are going to work for in this model are the internal surfaces of the chambers. All these internal surfaces in the chambers are the important ones. This is where the pressure is going to be applied in order to generate the bending behavior of the actuator and the external outer walls in which probably the uh, the expansion of the of the actuator is going to make these surfaces to have self contact in between them and those are also important so in order to select the surfaces and create a, a surface actually that we can use later. We go to static structure, right click, uh, tools, sorry. We go to tools, named selection. Named selection is like create surfaces in Abacus. Name selection one, you can change in them here, for example, inner walls, and then in geometry. Here you are already trying, you are already in the geometry selection. Yeah, so in order to only check the internal walls from here i will do this here with my mouse and then I, we are going to use this what is called section planes new section plane and then just go right into the middle and if you see it's already open here and we can see the internal cavities we walk we go back to the definition of our uh, name selection and then we go through the selection tool of uh, selection filter in phases I already had it selected, so now we are going to select only faces. And then here as well with control, you just go and select all the faces that are important for this setup. This one as well. And then if we rotate a little bit, we have all these. And we have also this one. This is the upper wall in the main channel and that is for this side and then we rotate and then we go to the other side and then we select them as well. Yeah. And as the same as in the last video, I can recommend you to take a little break uh, here and then apply and then you can at least already see that these are the, the, the inner walls are, are correctly selected but we are still missing the other side. 
So for that, well, let's, as we can see, it's still missing the other side. Let's deselect this section plane, and then I will bring as well my model in this orientation. I will create a new section plane, and then I will do exactly the same with the path rotated to the other side. And now we go as well to inner walls, and then I want to, I would like to edit this selection. And then I am here as well again, and then just control and click. If you miss select something or if you deselect everything, please just cancel and then go back to edit. We click apply, and now we see we have 42 faces, inner walls, and then we generate them again. And now the inner wall is also in green, which means that is correct. We deselect the section plane, and then we can take a look to the inner walls. Very good. And what we can do now is also to create a surface for the uh, outer walls, for these walls. So let's do that again. We go again to tools, create a new name selection, and then we say outer walls. Then we, in the geometry, please take care of that you have the correct selection filter as faces, and then just Go here, select them carefully with control. Let's rotate the model and then we select the other ones. And we click apply. We need to generate the name selection, and as we can confirm here, it's already applied. This is almost the same step as in Abacus of uh, create surfaces. So now we have them, we can save the project here, and we are done with the design modeler part. We close the design modeler, and then we are back in the workbench of ANSYS. We refresh the model, which is going to send all the information to the next step, which is going to be the setup. This is actually what it does, this refresh and updates. It's refresh, act, update the information in this section. And if there is information to be sent to the next step, it's going to be transferred to the next step of the setup. Yeah, so now model is as well in uh, with a question mark. Now we are going to click, double click in the model. We wait, mechanical is starting again. And then the first step that we need to take care in the design modeler, uh, if your part is looking so small in the beginning, uh, you can just click here, zoom to fit or zoom to selection. Zoom to selection is something like, uh, yeah some to fit and you have as well your you have you have as well your geometry the first thing that we need to see is that in the geometry there is a question mark here then we go to all parts and then if you see the material is still not assigned so we need to assign it so we go to this uh, bottom uh, to, to this drop down menu and then a last time sample geo is this is the one that we define in the engineering data sources just click on it and then the material now is fully defined and assign it to the geometry which is the most important thing and then what we have as well we as you can see here we have the geometry we have materials coordinate system mesh name selections name selections it was already transferred the name selection that we uh, defining the previous step of the design modeler, which is very good. So now we can save time when we define our loads and create our boundary conditions. So what we are, what is the next step now? The next step, or we assign the material to the geometry, the name selection is, is being propagated to this setup model. And now we have to this to deal with the static structural analysis. But this is where the boundary conditions, loads, step control are going to be defined. So how do we start here? We start, actually you can start because this is a static structural simulation. If it doesn't matter in which order you define the loads, it's going to take everything and then it's going to start to compute since the, since the initial time is going to apply all the boundary conditions that you, that you define. So 
what do we have here as well? If we're expecting the bending behavior of the unit in this direction, for example, we know that there is going to be one side that is going to be fixed, and then the pressure is going to be applied in the inner walls, and then it's going to bend probably in this direction. This is our fixing, this is going to be our fixing point. Pressure is going to be applied in all the internal cavities, and then it's going to bend the actuator. So let's do that. Let's fix one end. To fix one end, we right click in a static structural, we insert and fixed support. Fixed support, we are going to geometry selection. Geometry, let's we can check again that we are in selection filter of surfaces. We click here, we apply, and now we see that this uh, blue surfaces is going to be our fixed support. Good, that's one of the first step. And then what do we have as well in our setup? We have gravitational forces as well that are going to be applied through the whole model. So we go to again to static structural, right click, insert, and then is here standard at gravity. At gravity is going to be set as default in the correct in the right direction of in the direction of C minus as default. You can define it, you can change the direction here. In my case, as I design my component, this my set direction is the one that is correct as well, assign it in the minus set uh, orientation. So for me, this is good. I would just leave it as default. What do we have as well for boundary conditions? We have already one boundary conditions. We have what, oh, already one load applied through the whole uh, step. And then what is missing is the internal pressure that we want to apply to the chambers or, or pressurization load. So we go again to go, we go again to static structural, insert pressure. Here in the scoping method, we are going to change it to name and selection. In name selection, this drop down menu is going to give us the same, the name selection that we already previously defined. And we're going to select inner walls. In inner walls, we are going to define a normal to the surfaces. So all the pressure that we want to apply is going to be applied normal to the surfaces in all the surfaces. And the magnitude in the last video tutorial, we used 30 kilopascals, uh, 0.3 bars. In this game, is going to be exactly the same. So we define, we have pascals here as unit. So we have 30,000 pascals. It is going to be ramped from zero initial time to 30 to 30,000 pascals at the end of our simulation step, which is going to be one. So, so increase, we increase gradually, not directly in one, uh, in one time step, the, the whole pressure because of the large deformations and because of the material properties, it could lead to errors of, uh, very deformated shape of the elements are going to be highly distorted. Highly distortion of elements is one of the most common error for hyperelastic materials in ANSYS because uh, the time is too big um, and you cannot compute it from zero to one in just one step. And because of the loads as well are very high that they highly distort the elements if we don't really I increase them uh, gradually. So I think this is all for our simulation. Actually, it was it's, as I, if you have the expertise or if you know your software uh, and if you know what you are doing and if, and if you know what you are, what are you expecting, this is quite really straightforward and it should not be complicated. So the next thing that we need to do now that we have our, our simulation set up is to mesh the part. To mesh the part, we go here to mesh, just normal click, and then we are going to use, uh, I am going to use in this case because we are acting in a very non-linear uh, model, a uh, large deformation is usually uh, non-linear. Uh, so I'm going to use the non-linear mechanical mesh uh, engine. I will leave the element order as quadratic and the element size here is going to be uh, this is going to be very important if you remember or what if you check the video in abacus in abacus we define one millimeter element size 1.5 millimeter element size if you had not enough memory ram to run uh, the job 
in ANSYS, the engine so on this the, yeah, the engine dissolver in ANSYS is quite different as the one that in Abacus. And here I would recommend you and you will get a pretty accurate solution to set a 0 0.0 uh, three meters which is going to be three millimeters element size and it's going to give you enough uh, results and you, you will see you will see now what uh, what i'm saying and then the sizing we are just going to leave it as default but we want to capture curvature and we want to capture proximity and then quality is going to be as default inflation we are not going to define inflation for this mesh and pretty much we are going to leave it as default yeah so that's it as uh, just a recap 0 0.003 meters 3 millimeters element size uh, capture curvature and proximity and, pro uh, and capture curvature and proximity is going to be face and edges so we right click in the mesh and then we go to generate mesh it's going to take a few seconds maybe a few minutes this is depends on your machine and you can see here what it's doing if you click in this job so this is how it looks the mesh as we see we have this three millimeters element size the main element size and the proximity uh, function and curvature function uh, in face and edges allows to reduce the element size in uh, in, pro in the proximity of faces and edges which in this case is pretty useful because in these edges we have uh, smaller elements which can increase the uh, convergency method. Mm, it can help to converge faster and even to converge if we have smaller um, elements in the critical zone that in, we, we, in the one that we expect more deformation. So and if you see here in the statistics this is what i wanted to show you we have for this three limit three millimeter element size mesh we have 245,000 elements which is already quite a little bit i will say it's, it's already it's not so it's not a small number of elements and if we go as in abacus to decrease to one millimeter size element size it's going to it's going to work at least i don't know 380 40 uh, 400 thousand elements which is going to be for a normal computer or desktop computer is going to be quite heavy and you are not going to to get the results until few hours but with this in this tutorial with these three millimeters element size is going to give you results it's not going to take that much time and it's it's pretty doable for for normal computers so that's the mesh what is still missing what is still missing is uh, we have we need to define as well the contact the interaction properties between these outer surfaces and we actually need to define the analysis we still didn't have defined the analysis so let's do first the contact in order to define contact we go to model a4 and then we go to connections it's going to create this here and then we are going to insert manual contact region we are going to select uh here in the scoping method is going to be name it selection the contact is going to be outer walls the target is going to be outer walls. If you remember in Abacus, we used to use an interaction property called self-contact. Self-contact is kind of the same here when you select the surface against the surface. It's going to be a self-contact iteration property. And it's the, 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 contact, the contact body is the same body and the target body is going to be the same body. This is like a self-contact iteration property. And we are going to decide a definition we are going to set them as well as in abacus for sake of simplicity and for this tutorial frictionless and that's enough if you see here frictionless outer walls to outer walls is a self-contact direction and it's already fully defined and it's green in the connection properties if you see here the elastomer sample in geo is already here everything defined if you don't have this uh, materials uh, tab probably is because of the version that you are using in this case i'm using uh, ANSYS uh, 
2020 this is one of the newest version of ANSYS and if you have I think the 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 user interface and the graphical user interface changed quite a lot to be honest from the 2019 to the 2020 so if you don't find something you can leave it in the comments or if you don't find a property that I defined during the tutorial you can just ask me leave in the comment you can even send me an email you can go to my research gate uh, personal page and you can just uh, write your questions there I will do my best to answer you and guide you through the tutorial if you have a different version of it go then the next step is going to define us as I said or analysis for that we go to analysis settings here in the static structure and then here we have the number of steps current step numbers and step end time yeah so we are going to have one step static structure one step uh, in the in the abacus tutorial we did two steps for gravity and one for the pressure you can do as well it you can do that as well here in ANSYS I will just leave it in automatic one step and it's just going to fully uh, solve the problem one step in abacus you can do that as well but I just wanted to show you how this is stepwise uh, creation of uh, yeah, this stepwise solution can also be good in order to orientate you better but now that we know how it works we can just leave it in one step and then the step end time is going to be one second one second is going to be your final time or final simulation time auto time stepping this is quite interesting if you leave it in program controlled our, our ANSYS is going to try to increase and decrease the step size as much as it as it needs in order to prop to converge a solution the thing is for these hyper elastic large deformations so uh, simulations i already as i said for abacus i always recommend you to define yourself a small step size increment since the beginning so you don't really need to compute or try to compute one step with a bigger increment size and then the software is going to automatically recognize that you cannot compute this big step size and it's going to compute it's going to make a new iteration and then it's going to reduce the step size i can recommend you to this auto time stepping to put it in to select the on and then define it by time and as we made in abacus we're going to define this each step by time so initial step time i will set it 0.1 minimum step time you can go even like this if you need to make small increments maybe the pressure is too big maybe the, the load after is going to be very 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 uh, huge so you can still give them a little bit of place uh, to reduce increment size maximum time step we are going to leave it in one which is means if the initial time step at 0 0.1 can be computed the second step is going to be computed with the same increment size if you still can compute the second step with the same increment size then automatically because this auto time step is on and this is going to increase by a factor this the, the step size to get you a faster solution because it because ANSYS already knows that it can compute with 0 0.1 so it will try to compute with for example 0 point, 0 0.15 and if it computes two times with 0 0.50 it's going to increase a factor and then so on in order to provide you with a faster simulation as the same as in abacus we are going to this in solver controls we go to large deflection and we need to activate this we need to activate large deflection which means that the equilibrium iterations are going to be compute based on the latest deformed shape and this is how you increase as well the 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 this large def deformations no and actually i think that was pretty much it from for the analysis settings and i'm just checking if i missed something no but i think that was everything for the for the analysis setting as i said the important thing is to define correctly the time steps and the large deflection needs to be activated after that we have i think we have we can save again the project and we have almost everything in order to execute the job
we define the geometry, we, defi we assign the properly the material, we define and assign the connections and contacts that this model uh, has. We already create and assign the mesh. We define the analysis settings. We uh, insert the standard gravitational force to the, through the whole model. We define a fixed end support in order to support our component during the whole simulation time. And we already um, we are we are already applying the pressure from zero to thirty kilopascals from zero initial time to one second of a, a step end time. So what is the next step? Now we are here in the solution. If we if we click here in solution, we are here. I recommend you know to parallelize the job to increase a simulation. Uh, sim yeah, to speed up your simulation and get results faster. I as I recommend you to in Abacus, I recommend you to increase the or go to the process settings. You can go here. Maybe in oldest version of ANSYS, you have something as well here like advanced options or something like this or or compute options we go to solve process settings this is going to run it at in my computer we go to advanced and then we are gonna check the box of distribute solution if it is possible and the max number of utilized cores is going to be the max number of physical cores this is very important the max number of physical cores that your computer has if you have for example a four core cpu eight threads you only have four physical cores. ANSYS mechanical no, doesn't matter in which version are you working. ANSYS mechanical only works with physical cores. Hyper trading is going to be penalized in ANSYS and it's going to throw you immediately an error that you don't have enough physical cores to compute the simulation as the one that you define. So I have 36 physical cores and I have 72 threads in my computer and as I said, hyper-trading is penalized in ANSYS mechanical, so you only can use the max number of physical cores. In my case, it's 36. Check in your task manager again. Here, for example, you go to your CPU. How many, how many cores do you have physically installed? Log logical processor are with a hyper-trading. I have hyper-trading deactivated in my computer, but look at this course this is in german look at this in, in in english which means physical course or course and this number is the one that you need to insert here if you have a graphics card compatible with ansys which i hope you have if you don't have it's also okay uh, you can also select here nvidia a number of utilized gpu devices and click okay uh, the only graphics card that are compatible for GPU acceleration with ANSYS mechanicals are Quadro, Hike and Quadro. Depending on your version of ANSYS that you have, uh, uh, the, you need to check in, you just Google uh, Google's uh, GPU acceleration ANSYS. Depending on your version, you are going to find the compatibility model of this. Usually Hike and Quadros, like since the Quadro K6000, um, Quadro M6000, the Quadro P5000, the Quadro P6000, Quadro GP100, Quadro GP100, all the Tesla models, this is very important, all the Tesla models are GPU compatible to accelerate and speed of analysis simulation. So I have a Tesla model, so I, that's why I can select. So now done, we go to the solution part and then we need to insert. What do we want? Here is very important. What do we want or what do we want to, to analyze at the end of the simulations? I want to, to see personally how it deformed, the deformed shape. I want to check, I think it's also interesting for me to check the stress distribution over the whole model in its deformed shape. And maybe, as I said, the maximum deformation, the stress, probably the strain as well, to quantify and analyze energy levels. And yeah, we are going to start with that. So we go to solution, right click, insert, deformation, total deformation, which is going to be already I assign uh, inserted here and this is going to be one of the results that are going to be evaluated at the end of the simulation. What do we want as well? We have strain as we said, equivalent for misses. You have here for you different options. We want as well, for example, stress. We want the font misses stress equivalent and that's all. We can save again the project and here we are ready to run. 
people. So we already went, we can recap uh, a little bit again. Uh, and geometry is done. Material is assigned. Connections and contacts are defined and assigned. Mesh is created and assigned to the part. Analysis settings are already, are, are already defined. Please take a look here, make a, make a pause in, in this part of the video and take a look again to your setup that you match what you have here. A standard that gravity is defined in the, C, in the C negative direction. Fixed support is going to be this part of here. And then pressure is already going to be applied into the internal walls that we define in our named selections. Total deformation is going to be asked as a result to be evaluated. Elastic strain is going to be uh, asked as a result to be evaluated as well as equivalent stress. So we already distributed our process uh, or solution. If it is available in your computer, you can save again now the project. And then if you want to solve, you just go to solution and then click on solve. It's going to start here uh, solving and it's going to start building the mathematical model and then it's going to get which is going to gen it's going to generate all the uh, stiffness ma matrices and then again and then it's going to start computing them if you want to check your solution information uh, this is one of the most useful things to monitoring uh, your solution go to solution information and then it's going to start here uh, doing all the process it's going to show you all the process that is doing ANSYS mechanical in the background and if you check your task manager the physical cost that you uh, define in the distribution is already used 100% of my CPU we have here the 36 mechanical instances and if you see here CPU is used 100% I can really recommend you from here. If you see here in my CPU manager, I am using at least 41 gigabytes of memory RAM. I'm going, it's going to maybe go to 50 gigabytes, maybe 60 gigabytes of memory RAM used. Don't get scared. The thing is ANSYS works like this. If you put eight cores, if the more cores that you use, the more memory that you need for ANSYS. You need, you need to fit the cores with memory. So I selected 36 cores, and which I need at least, I have, I think ANSYS, as I configure it now, I am using at least one gigabyte of memory per core. So 36 cores I use, at least I need 36 gigs of memory RAM. You can even increase it, maybe two, three gigabytes, four gigabytes per core. In high performance computing simulations, there is virtually no limit. To this so don't get scared if my cpu if, if my computer is using 40 45 50 gigabytes of ram your computer depends on the cost that you assign is going to use less but ansys i tell you ansys really takes memory really uses memory in order to to get faster results if you don't have enough memory don't worry ansys is going to compute as well but it's, it's going to take longer why for example if we read if we can see here if you can read here we can see that the distributed space matrix solver is currently running in the in-core memory mode. In-core memory mode, as this uh, says, is going to solve all the matrices in the memory RAM, which is insanely faster in comparison with mechanical drives, solid state drives, and even MBMS, uh, MBME solid state drives. And it's going to provide you the faster results as, 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 it, uh, as ANSYS can. If you don't have enough enough if you don't have enough memory memory RAM, and this is going to run out of core. Out of core means that it's going to use the most memory RAM available to compute the main matrix stiff stiffness matrix, and then it's going to transfer everything to the mechanical hard drives or to the solid state drives or to the MBME drives that you have in order to compute to, to, to get you the solution, which this transfer rate is going to decrease the solution time. If you have I really recommend you for these simulations to have, I don't know, maybe 64 gigs of RAM. 64 gigs of RAM should be enough to run properly this kind of uh, one actuator simulations with around 200, 300, maybe 40 uh, 
400,000 elements. And if you see here, it's already computing. My computer is still dying here, uh, trying to get the solution as fast as it can, and now it's going to here. So one another thing about the monitor of the solution. If you want to monitor another thing, for example, we can go hit to solve the output. Uh, one of the most useful monitor uh, parameters that you can have in ANSYS is the force convergence. Here in the force convergence, you can see as the time that you define in which you are working right now. If you remember, we defined the first step as 0 0.1. So we are still in the time 0 0.1 and we are still looking this convergence for uh, the force convergence against the force criterion that we that ANSYS automatically defined for this setup. And as soon as the convergence criteria is met, we are going to finish the step, increase the step size, and then go again to compute. So I'm going to fast forward this uh, simulation and see you when it's almost done. So one thing that I forgot to mention is the approximate uh, time that you need to compute this simulation. Um, in my computer, it takes around 22 minutes, 23 minutes which is almost the same that it took in the last video with the Abacus tutorial. It's exactly the same part. Is uh, uh, This is a bigger mesh, which is in ANSYS is also fine to compute, and it took around 22, 23, 23 minutes. So if you follow the last tutorial with uh, Abacus, it's going to be almost the same, time that, the same time that it took you to compute for Abacus. It's going to be almost the same time that that is for this model, maybe a little bit faster, maybe, I don't know, 10-20% faster is going to take uh, ANSYS to compute the solution. But as I said in our course, don't worry if you see that it's very slow or if you get no convergence and then it's... If you, as you see here, you, I already got the, the solution for the, for the first step after uh, nine iteration and uh, nine equilibrium iterations and I already got this, this solution step one and then now I'm going to make the increment of 0 0.1 as I say it is not going to be changed it and I already here got the solution now I'm going to be in the now I'm going to be working the 0 0.2 time which is already 20 percent of the simulation it's, it takes time my computer I try to 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 put it as as with the best hardware that I can but it takes time. I remember when I was working on this with a, even it was a, a Dell Precision workstation with an Intel Xeon and four cores and 32 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA Quadro M4000. It took time. That time with that computer and four physical cores, because ANSYS, as I said, only use physical cores, it took around, I don't know, three hours? Maybe? Maybe three hours or maybe a little bit less. I don't remember. But if, it, if this doesn't see too good for you, uh, welcome to the student world of engineering. No, usually you don't have supercomputers of clusters access. So it takes time. It takes time and it's going to take a few hours and maybe you want to change something at the end and then it's again three hours. I can recommend you take your time, leave your computer running a few minutes, few hours, depending on the hardware that you have and then get the solution, save the solution. If you want to modify something, copy the whole ANSYS project to another folder and modify the result, media also. And that's uh, just so to back up already the file that you already uh, got a solution because it takes time. So don't worry if it is not done in 20, 30 minutes, it takes its, its time. See you at the end of this simulation. The simulation is already done, it's, uh, it's just finished. And we see now that it's already evaluating the result history that we asked for. And if we can see, take a look here, we went from the 0 0.1 time, we, he, we solved one step, convergency, we increased the step, convergency, we increased the step, got a solution, we increased the step, got a solution, we increased the step, Got the solution and then we script increase the step again and if you see the force convergence and the force criterion it was meet the criterion of the force and then we uh, we went to the next step so then let's go to now once once it's done 
uh, we can go just click and in the total deformation for example and then we can see here how it looks the deformed result this is how it looks uh, you can see for example maybe you want to show the elements sorry yeah maybe you want to show the elements to give you a better idea how exactly it was this is the total deformed shape this is how it looks it looks very similar to the tutorial that we made in august should be millimeters uh, a difference probably i don't remember exactly but you can take a look to my research paper and probably you will find out there and then we can go to the elastic elastic uh, equivalent el elastic strain and these are the results this is the equivalent equivalent stress and then we can take a look again uh, how this it looks it looks very similar as we said as the one from Marcus and yeah should be actually the same so that's it how it looks it looks the results you don't need to import results you don't need to open results you just need to click here if you if we go back to the workbench we can see that all these steps of our static structural analysis are green and are checked and are done you can go now and save the, the project i really recommend you as soon as you have a full solution save it and if you want to work again and mess out again with this I re as I said, save it and create another instance of the project. We can go back to the uh, mechanical and as we see here, we have here, for example, the total deformation or the equivalent stress for us. We see and here we go from zero to one second. If you want to evaluate results in a different time step, you just go click, for example, here in 0 0.5, uh, something like this. And then this is as well with a lightning symbol marked. You click, right click, retrieve this result. And then it's going to compute a little bit and it's going to give you the result in this time step. If you want to go, I don't know, one, one here, you go to 0 0.2, retrieve this result. And then it gives it to you and it computes. If you want to go back to the one, just go here, retrieve this result, right click, retrieve the result, and it's going to show it again. If for some reason you don't see this deformed shape, it can be that your ANSYS software is not showing you this true one to zero, uh, one to one true scale of deformation. If that doesn't happen, you go to result tab and then hit true scale. Sometimes I even got results, I don't know why exactly, that it looked like this. And I miss days and days and hours and hours modifying material checking and computing again solutions and i was like why is not working and then i found that it's because of the scale it was not right uh, yeah so you just need to be sure that you are selected in true scale one 1 1.0 and then it's going to show you the deformed shape on without scaling really take a look to that i, I made so i spent so many hours i cannot even tell you i don't know maybe 200 hours checking for i remember one project checking for errors and at the end it was the this i spent days checking and it was at the end the scale so this is how it looks thank you very much for for going with me during this tutorial i hope this worked for you and if you have errors or if you have questions you can just please leave it just please leave in the comment your questions and i will do my best as i say to to answer them i hope it was also funny for you to take a look uh, a little bit how to make this kind of simulation and i hope it helps you in your, in your research or in your student project and anything regarding this tutorial you can contact me and thank you very much see you for the next time